Uh, I'm Leon Litvak. I work at Queen's. I'm also uh, on the board of CRC. And my question is about, uh, is to all the panelists, the kind of a, what's all this to me question. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, I'd, I'd like your views on what this decade of commemorations and how it is uh, observed, uh, what that means to uh, members of ethnic minorities, uh, people who are immigrants to Ireland, North and South, uh, why should they be interested, and uh, what is it to them, what, what, what part do they have to play either in the commemorations or in uh, the larger issues that arise concerning a, um, uh, a shared future. So how, how does this um, uh, discussion that applies very specifically to uh, uh, two communities and how they uh, interacted 100 years ago and since, how, how does that apply uh, more widely to other citizens of this island who maybe cannot claim the same kind of stake in these events? Sorry, John. Well, I, I think these events have uh, shaped the people amongst whom the immigrants are coming to live. And I think immigrant communities uh, need to understand the communities that they're now going to become a part of. So that rather than Ireland being a total mystery to them in terms of the history, I think it would be important that they understood some of the history. I think also if they understand, as I have indicated in my understanding of it tonight, that part of the conflict in Ireland has to do with the way in which you accommodate majorities and minorities. Some of these immigrants are coming from situations where that is an acute problem for them because they have left their countries of origin because they are themselves minorities. And they're in Ireland seeking a degree of freedom uh, which they didn't have from the place that they have come. Uh, and clearly there are economic reasons why they have come as well. Now the other element of the question is what does it have to do anyway with everybody? Why should we bother with this stuff? My answer to that would be this. I believe that whenever the centenary of the 1798 rebellion took place, it became a faith and motherland kind of celebration. In the centenary, the Presbyterians were largely written out of the story. Luckily, whenever we came to the bicentenary, the historians got a hold of it before the ideologues could get a hold of it. And therefore, the bicentenary was celebrated in a much more comprehensive and accurate way than the centenary was. And I think the benefit of these professional historians getting involved in the details of 1912 to 1922 means that that is an enormous privilege to be able to sit it you know, in these kinds of meetings and listen to this detailed stuff being set out before us and the vast amount of effort which historians put into trying to understand what actually happened. It means that this kind of academic research is being done before, before the ideologues get a hold of a bit of it and therefore it prevents distortion taking place and we're enormously grateful to, to the world of academia uh, for in fact uh, doing this. And somebody rightly said, and I think it was in the lecture in 1916, that the mythology grows around an event which distorts the actual significance of the original event. So whenever you analyze the original event, it may be quite different from the mytho mythological accretions which have attached, them to, attached themselves to the event, and particularly to the memory of the event and the way in which the event has been subsequently celebrated. Yeah, very briefly, just to endorse a lot of what John has been saying without trying to repeat it. I also think that we have to get over ourselves. Um, you know, the reality is, is that out there, and not to diminish because anyone who knows the work that I do, I work a lot with the, in the victim and survivor sector, not to negate their lived experiences, but we as a society have to realize that we need to build a shared future. Um, and that's not about repeating the past. And that's what we have been doing. And um, we cling to the past. And we have notions and myths built around it. So we have to absolutely debunk some of the myths, get over ourselves. And also, we have to learn and accept and be enriched by the diversity that is out there. And by countries and peoples um, who have had to fled through their own situation. And you still hear the narrow-mindedness. 
here today of people saying they're coming here to take our jobs. Um, there's all sorts of things that are put out there uh, and we need these people to enrich us to make us bigger than our own story. So I think that they have a very important role to, say, uh, to play. I was also very heartened at a, a recent conference, um, it was actually in Dublin, where they, there was a group who actually said, how can we support and help? What part can we play? They asked the question. And I thought with a great deal of generosity. Um, why do we bother with this stuff? Um, the recent 50th anniversaries uh, of the, the Easter Rising and the, uh, the, the, the signing of the Covenant, I think led up to obviously the, the more recent conflict in 1969. Uh, and we're also coming up now to the 50th anniversaries of the more recent conflict itself. Uh, and we need to be very um, diligent about that, we need to be careful about that, and we need to uh, give people a level of knowledge that they don't uh, romanticise, because there's young people now who have no memory of the atrocities and the horrors of the past, and they have these notions uh, and heroic notions of the past, so I think we have got to involve them in education and learning uh, on unpacking the past. So it's hugely important that we do uh, remember and do these commemorations very differently than what they've been done in the past. Yes, I've heard it said actually by a known historian, but a, a sociologist, that commemoration has very little to do with historians. In fact, the man with a paintbrush painting a slogan on a gable wall uh, has probably more to do with commemorations than the historical community, the historical community, or community relations activists, or anyone like that. But I think that points up the need to reclaim, as it were, history from those who would uh, you, you, who would pervert its purpose uh, in a propagandistic way. And I think that we're, we're well aware as this society moves out of conflict and turns the corner, which even this morning at Enniskillen, I mean, I was there and you're, you're aware all the time of all the nuances, the, again, the invocation of the Irish language, the, sh the shared future agenda, the Archbishop of Ohama's reference to um, uh, an enduring Irish peace, you know, um, the Pax Hibernica and that kind of thing, that we are moving on. So, you know, uh, it's important to remember um, the future as well as these events in 1912, 1914, 1960. I think that we have to add a corrective. Uh, that doesn't mean rewriting the past. It doesn't mean kind of revising history by, as somebody said, diluting out people's aspirations and things that they hold dear and hold sacrosanct. That's not what it's about. But it's about looking at the past objectively. It's about injecting some kind of balance, acknowledging what has come up in several contributions this evening, in that the context was different. This isn't um, 2012. We have moved on in many respects. Um, that uh, we must attend to the primary sources of which we have far more now, and uh, Dr. Mansers referred to land commission records, which could inform the debate still further. So it must be grounded in the facts. But there is generally an acknowledgement, I think, in an island and the Northern Ireland that's moved uh, kind of um, dramatically in the last 15 years or so. Um, there is that acknowledgement that these events shaped our destinies on this island, North and South that 1912 and the UVF impacted on Irish republicanism uh, and helped to call into existence the 1916 rising. Um, the treatment of minorities in the settlements of 1920 to 22, north and south, is key to understanding um, some of the developments after that, the lack of a system of checks and balances. We've kind of looked at some of these uh, in reviewing the ground in the past two months. So I think for all these reasons we have to remember, you mentioned people from um, ethnic minorities, Leon, I think that's very important because even today in Enniskillen there was a reference to the rich diversity of this society. I don't think they just meant orange and green. I mean, I think they meant Poles and Lithuanians and Chinese and Nigerians and, you know, the Jewish community, which is a much longer history, the Italian kind of community that arrived at the end of the 19th century um, and all of that. And in various groups, and I was at a meeting yesterday with Mary and Deirdre and a few others who were here, and we were talking about, you know, uh, broadening this out. I mean, there are resonances with self-determination um, in Europe after the First World War. 
You have the questions of Poland, you've got all of those issues. You have, for example, the fact, and I throw it out again, that Litvinov, um, a leading kind of um, Russian revolutionary, spent the war years in Belfast, you know, on the Antrim Road, returning to Russia for the 1917 revolution and eventually becoming um, Stalin's um, Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, only to be dropped because his Jewish uh, background made that unacceptable to Hitler in 1938. But that's part of this story. It's a very rich tapestry. Sorry, Mark. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot to add to what I uh, said. But I suppose anyone coming into a country um, uh, would be quite interested in the history and uh, the culture of the country and uh, be quite interested in events, including commemorations um, uh, uh, that happen. Uh, so, but of course, I mean, people in a society, uh, not everybody's going to be interested in these things. I mean, not everybody's interested in the GAA, not everybody, to put it mildly, um, went to the Eucharistic Congress and so on. I mean, we're, <laughs> you know, we're, 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 we're free individuals and we're free, to, you know, nobody can take an interest in everything. We have to take an interest, an interest in some things, but I think for, uh, those that are interested and because I think this is a valuable stock taking exercise and it's always with the motive of uh, learning from history uh, so that we can do things better in the future.